in my uh, last video I was working on this uh, quilted uh, bag and a couple of people said they wanted to see what it would look like when it was done and there it is. Uh, I'm working on a different one today. Well, let me show you the back. So there's that one and I'm going to start working on the next one. One sec. So I've got, uh, this is a, I don't know if it's going to show up how uh, the fabric really looks, but this is a gold uh, fabric. It's uh, It's got a real gold metallic look to it. It's actually um, fabric from my new favorite section of the fabric store, which is the uh, remnant upholstery fabric section. And uh, it is a fairly heavyweight fabric, but not super thick. Um, because of that, because I'm making it for a bag, I want to have some real body to it. So what I've done on this one, the, the last one was a heavier weight fabric. This one's not so much. So what I've done here is I have, uh, I've used the, the uh, uh, gold fabric and uh, I have it spray basted onto the batting. Now the backing I'm using is just plain muslin. But I've also added a layer of uh, fairly heavyweight uh, uh, interfacing in there that's been uh, pressed in place. So that's going to give the whole piece more body. Uh, <clears throat> what I did to start with is I used a uh, water uh, erasable uh, pen to just mark out my basic shapes uh, that I'll quilt the feathers around and then after the feathers are quilted then I'll fill in uh, with all that quilting and that's uh, the overall look that you'll get and you can see that it's it's quite stiff and that's what I want to make a bag with I wouldn't want a quilt to be that stiff uh, so I certainly if I was making this to actually use as a quilt, it would not have added that extra layer of uh, interfacing to stiffen it up, but worked well on this. I used um, a uh, kind of a chartreuse green thread, and the reason I chose green, and I again I don't know if it's going to show in this uh, uh, on the video camera, but this gold fabric is made with, here's, here's some of the the green threads that are in it. It's, this is uh, cross-woven, so the uh, one direction the fabric are these green threads, and the other direction they're gold, and that kind of gives it that uh, uh, overall look. That uh, you know, here's the here's the gold. So that uh, anyway, uh, I thought the green would look nice, and I I think I'm pretty pleased with how that turned out. So I'm gonna do feathers on these shapes here and I'm using my uh, Singer 66 red eye machine. It's in a treadle. Um, this is um, this isn't the exact same color of thread but this is this kind of spool it comes on. This is uh, uh, Coates and Clark brand. Uh, there's 500 or um, 5,000 meters on a yard or on a on a spool. So it's uh, uh, one of my favorite threads. And uh, it's got. Let me just get this out of the way. <coughs> it's got a good feel to it, and it uh, tends to quilt nicely for me anyway. So. I'm going to just quilt some feathery pieces around that shape that I first put in. I only mark the main uh, the main 
stem, uh, the spine, just in this case because I wanted them to both be uh, in the right positioning so that when I go to put this bag together, the feather parts do not get covered up by the bag's handles. I wanted to make sure I got them in the right spot, and that's why I actually marked them. Usually, with, the, with just a feather design, I just kind of wing it. But if I get the spine in the right place, then I can have a better uh, feeling for how the uh, whole thing is going to look when it's done, and it helps placement of the handles on the bag. I usually do uh, all the feathers on the inside and then come back and do the outside and finish up that way. Some people will do one loop on one side, one on the other, and do it back and forth all the way down. I have just uh, become more accustomed to doing it this way. There isn't a right way or a wrong way. This is just the way that feels more comfortable to me. trying to keep my hands out of the way so you can see what I'm doing, but oftentimes I put my hands pretty close uh, to the uh, uh, needle to get uh, more uh, control over it. One of the nice things about adding that extra layer of uh, uh, interfacing into this because it's very stiff now, it really maneuvers easily. And uh, it really has not changed the, uh, the way I'm quilting it. It, uh, it seems to quilt just, just like it would without that in it. I did have to make a little bit of an adjustment on the tension. But I, I have to change the tension every time I use a different thread or a different fabric anyway. So it's really, that's not a big deal. said before <clears throat> in other videos, I think one of the best ways to, uh, to learn how to do a feather before you actually start sewing is do it on paper. Grab yourself a piece of paper and a pencil and try just to draw one. And the secret is to get it all drawn without ever picking up your pencil because that's the way you have to do it on the machine. You can't keep stopping and starting and moving the, the needle to a different spot. You want to be able to do it all in one big long fluid motion. So practice doing that with your pencil and you'll get a feel for the way it'll work on the machine. And I uh, have found for myself that um, the 
best. Um, the best results happen, well, first, after a lot of practice. Uh, but second, when you're not uh, being ultra critical and being your worst critic, because once it's done, nobody is going to look at it and say, oh, that's really pretty, but that one part on your feather is a little too short, or that one's a little too fat. I think when we, uh, when we get too obsessed with perfection, we can drive ourselves crazy. Well, there's one finished, and, you know, the second is the same as the first. So, no, um, no big mystery or anything. Uh, if you did it once, you can do it again. And, after I get all of that done, I'll come back and, like I did on this one, do all this pebble stitching. And that'll finish the two sides and then I'll assemble it into a bag. And I'll show you that when it's finished. But for now, I'm just going to finish up my feathers. One of the uh, one of the things that comes with practice is uh, learning how to quilt over uh, lines so your uh, the places where you overlap don't show as much. Uh, but even if you can't do that. They still will look pretty good, even if you're even if you're not going exactly over your lines. Because I don't know if you can tell, but I the way I do feathers, a lot of the stitching is overlapping. And you see how I did this? I just did one here where it didn't overlap. And uh, I'm not going to get too frustrated and make myself pull it all out because it really, in the big picture, it probably won't show. Uh, so, uh, and if you look at the other one, there's some places where, where some of that, uh, uh, some of those lines don't overlap perfectly, but they're okay. Uh, now, it never hurts to try and do a nice uh, a really good job, but it does hurt when you put too much pressure on yourself to be perfect, because we are not mass-producing robots, we're people, and uh, so no two will ever turn out the same. And that's what makes it nicer than coming from a factory, is that they're not exact, precise, perfect. Uh, they have a little personality. So anyway, don't beat yourself up if they're not perfect. It isn't worth it. And a few little imperfections add the human touch. Okay, I'm going to finish up and uh, next time I'll show you the finished uh, bag.
happy quilting.